So I'm happy to be here. And um, my name is David Hidago. OK. <laughs> and I am the Africa Regional Lead for Seymour Media, International Public Relations. Um, I will share more about that when we go into the session. Our MD and founder, Claude Moore, was supposed to be leading this session, but uh, there were some last minute uh, changes that happened. And I'm going to be representing leading this session and i'm excited to meet every one of you particularly to meet you kemi thanks for being the first person you are among the you have, you have those people that that always take the first seats you're sharing anything you would have your share already so thank you kemi for being a part of this session i look forward to having the next um one hour of interactions and engagement with you and every other person who will be joining in the session. And um, should you have any questions while we are having this session, feel free to drop the questions in the chat uh, box. I'll be looking at the questions. And you don't have to wait to the end of the session to ask the questions. If you drop the questions and I see that um, it's a question that, is, that I need to respond to even during the session, I will pick the question and respond to it. By the way, at the end of the session, there's going to be a QA and a time where you can ask all the questions that you, you have regarding the session. So while I wait for Raymond to uh, bring up my presentation so we can get started. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. It's nice to meet you. You're the second person in the house. So let me give you a round of applause. I already gave Kemi a round of applause. So I'm giving you yours for being the second person in the house. Nice to meet you. So, <laughs> yeah, so we're waiting for the presentation to come up. Well, why are we waiting for the presentation to come up? Um, can you share in the chat box, maybe in the start, what you do? Because this session is really for entrepreneurs or people who want to leverage public relations and communication, as well as personal branding to build their business, to grow their startups. So can you share in the chat session what you do? Um, are you an entrepreneur? Um, you know, just share in the chat session so I have an idea of who I have in the room. It's going to help me, so I, I get to tailor. And if if you have some of your talk about your business, if you share it as well, I could use your business as examples even while delivering the session. So with that being said, and we, um, with the presentation already on the screen, I want to once again welcome you um, to this session, the public relations applications public relations, communications, and personal branding mentor session. And um, I want to once again appreciate um, Africa Next and the team behind Africa Next, Ngozi, and everybody behind that's working backstage to make this happen. Once again, thank you for putting together this event. So by the way, like I introduced myself earlier, my name is David Idago, and I work with Seymour Media, who we are. Seymour Media is an international public relations um, agency based out of New York, but we work across different markets, including the, the UK, the US, uh, of course, in Africa and the Caribbean markets. And we, um, Seymour Media is led by Claudine Moore, who is the founder and MD, who was supposed to be leading this session, like I said earlier, but um, as a result of last minute changes, she was not able to do it. And I'm, you know, standing in for her and I'm excited to be doing this and to be meeting all of you. So um, in the next you see some of the work we have done. We work internationally and, of course, across Africa. So in the next slide, you're going to see um, some of the clients and the brands we have served globally, and um, as well as the, the clients we have served um, across Africa as well. Um, Raymond, can you go to the next slide, please? OK. I think there's. Um, so, like I said, um, 
we work across different markets. So these are some of the brands we've served at global markets. Um, we've worked with international brands like World Remit, um, Coca-Cola, Louis Vuitton. And of course, we've also served brands across Africa. You see that in the next slide where um, we work with brands like Conga, we, um, UBA, Hair Holding, Apex, um, a couple of brands. And we have, over the last two years, two to three years, progressed the um, um, space. And these are some of the tech brands we work with. And just, uh, I didn't put that here in the launch. Last year is the future program for um, female decided to create a mentorship program for female founders in Africa and you know help them clarify their message and help them tell their story right to attract investors and to grow their business. And the next slide is a, um, a brief about myself. Like I said earlier, I'm the Africa Regional Lead for Seymour Media and I work with Seymour Media um, Africa clients as well as Africa focused clients. And these are some of the brands we've worked with in Africa that I've personally worked and handled communications and media training for. I'm also a, a member of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. I'm a certified PR practitioner and a provost of Public Relations Academy. So with that being said, of the introduction here, Christine is a communication professional. Okay, great. It's nice to meet you, Christine. Kemi, you can also introduce yourself. I'd love to have a feel of the people who are in the room so that um, the interactions we are having is something that aligns and I, we could um, have, we could, I could use some of the examples and some of your experiences or some of the questions you have to answer, some of your um, experience to answer the questions you have. So in the next slide, we're going to be looking at some of the things we're covering in today's session. Um, basically, when I lead any session, I don't want to assume that um, I, I just want to I lead every session with the with um, from the place of starting from the beginning, because I don't want to assume everybody knows um, the basics so so that we don't miss out anything. So I like us to, st to start from the basics, uh, which is PR and communications fundamental, as well as go down into storytelling, defining your brand message, um, creating actionable public relations campaign and looking at the fundamentals of media relations. Then we'll end with personal brand elevation and talk a little about the power of attention as well as you know, share with you some takeaways. And then we have the question and answer sessions. So if you're excited to, um, to, be, to be part of this session, just drop in the chat session, excited. I want to see the excitement. Since I can't see you physically, I want to see you um, being active in the chat but in the chat session so I see that I have an active audience and we can get started great I see excited I hope to learn a lot great nice to meet you Ellen nice to meet you all right let's get started so like I said we're going to be looking at the the fundamentals public relations and communication fundamentals and what we want to achieve today in the next is try to compress the basics of public relations, storytelling, media, and personal branding. In themselves, you know, they are, they are, they are discussions, they are topic areas that require, like, you know, years, years to learn, right? It requires a lot of investment and time to learn. But what I want to achieve in the next one hour is to compress everything and see how to give you some takeaways that after this session, you can go ahead to implement, if you're a startup, if you're a small business owner, you can implement what we have talked about. And if, like um, Christine, who is a communication professional, it's, you know, these some of the things you are hearing will be things you already know, and some of what you hear will be things that help reinforces what you already know. So, and of course, you learn some new things. So, like I said, we'll be starting with the fundamentals. I would like us to start with what exactly is public relations. Now, for those who are not communication professionals, um, it's important that we look at what P PR really is. In Nigeria especially, uh, public relations is mostly seen as media relations, okay? So most times when you introduce yourself as a public relations professional, um, people say, oh, you, you write, you work with the media. While media relations is a part of public relations, 
public relations is beyond media relations. Public relations is really about building and leveraging relationships with key, with key stakeholders of your business to achieve your business objectives. Lev building, you are initiating, building, and leveraging. So it's either you're initiating it, if you don't already have it, you're nurturing it, if you, if you already have the relationship, or you're leveraging an existing relationship or a partnership with you know, uh, the media or with another brand to achieve business objectives. Now, the goal, the key words there are achieve business objectives. Public relations is not only about building awareness or creating, you know, buzz, or making people, getting people to know about the organization. That is just a component of public relations, right? But public relations is really about tying everything you do into the achievement of business objectives. You have to be able to achieve business objectives. Otherwise, public relations will be a waste of effort if what you're doing does not align or does not help to achieve business objectives. So some of the myths of public relations is the fact that most people think public relations is only about saying something good about your business to the media. So most people think, oh, I have something good to say. Whether it's true or it's not true, let me go ahead to say something about, the, uh, about my company to the media. But with the definition of public relations like I gave earlier, public relations encompasses more than just media relations. Public relations include things like, um, you know, of course, there's message development, defining, clarifying your message. There's also the part of crisis management. There's a part of media relations, which is what most people know about public relations. Then there's community relations. There's investors relations. There's a whole, you know, in the bucket of public relations, there's a lot of things that public relations delivers. And you need to see public relations beyond just getting awareness or attention. It's about building awareness, yes, but it's also about building social proof and to build credibility. And as we go down into this training, you understand why it's important to not only build awareness, but build social proof and credibility because businesses or people do business with you based on the fact that they trust you. The reason you go out to buy a product is based on trust. There's the trust capital that's exchanged. And what public relations does for an organization in terms of, in terms of how it manages relationship across all stakeholders is build a trust capital. Is build a trust capital with investors, build a trust capital with your um, customers and consumers, build a trust capital with the media, Build a trust capital, you know, with your stakeholders, your community. So one thing we need to understand is that public relations is beyond just saying something good about your organization. It's beyond media relations. And one thing I also need to point out is that public relations is not only for big brands. Because most startups think that public relations, it's only for big brands and multinationals. A lot of money to do public relations. Yes, you need, if you want to, if you want to pay an agency like us, of course you're going to pay money to do it. But there are some basics that you can do for yourself as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur. And even if as a consultant, they said you can also work with small and medium-sized um, organizations by providing public relations services that are not as expensive as most people think it is. Most people think that for you to have great public relations services, it has to be really expensive, but that's not all. You need to pay for something that's good, but you can also get public relations or execute public relations without having a big budget. And one thing I need to stress, one, one more thing I need to stress is the fact that it is a small, it is a startup, the, the tech startup and the small business owner like that is growing, right, that needs public relations even more. Because the bigger brand already have money to spend. They have money to spend on media, media buying and all of that. That means if they want to be on CNN, if they want to be on any platform, they can pay for it, right? I'm not saying that you necessarily have to pay for media, but I'm saying you can decide to do pay for ads or do media buy. But as a small business owner, you don't have the luxury of, you don't have the, the, the large pocket to be able to spend money on media. That means you need to distill your message clearly and you need to be able to know what your key messaging is. You need to clarify what your core message is. You need to identify who your target audience 
are and of course what medium you're going to use to reach out to them and you need to learn the art of storytelling and tell the stories in a way that you get the attention of the journalist to be able to write about you or speak about you and then you are able to get coverage and build awareness and build social proof and of course build credibility to attract investment or attract uh, business opportunities for your organization so public relations is as important to small business owners as much as it's important to multinationals and uh, you know international companies nice to meet you bonnie face nice to meet you annie as well nice to meet you diary so let's go to the next step of this conversation which is storytelling in public relations and communication one thing i need you to know like i said here, is the fact that storytelling is very important it's critical to public relations and communications generally especially if you are running if you're a tech startup for instance or you're you're in an industry that has unique jargons that they use tech terminologies people may not understand data statistics and you know all of those numbers you're throwing around you need to be able to tell stories that a lot that draw people to you that people can relate with and of course from those stories distill key messaging that would of course trigger certain actions, whether it's actions towards buying your product or actions towards investing or actions towards granting, giving you opportunities for the media. So storytelling is critical and important. It's a very important component in public relations. I know you probably have heard this enough, but I can't, it can't be said enough. The fact is stories are critical. Everybody loves great stories and stories Great stories cut across cultures, cut across uh, nationalities, cut across religion. And some of the things we know about life or about religion, about the world, has been told to us by stories, right? It's great stories that have been able to help us relate with most of the things we know or we believe or we accept. So storytelling is critical to public relations and critical to communication and as, as much very critical to your business. So um, the next slide, please. In the next slide, we're going to be talking about the fact that you need to choose stories over statistics. I, you know, I've said this a couple of times in previous training, stories over statistics. I usually say this, people will relate with stories but you can use statistics and data and case studies to buttress your stories, to validate your stories, to create social proofs of your story, but always lead with a story. Whether you are pitching the media or whether you are pitching an investor or whether you're putting together your pitch deck or whether you are crafting a, a, a press release, always lead with a story because People will understand the story much more than they will understand statistics, except, of course, you're speaking to uh, an audience, an industry audience that already understands, you know, the jargons and all of that, that need the, the statistics. Then you probably lead with statistics. But trust me, even for that audience, stories always win. Now, every brand has a story because the question most times when you talk to um, startups, tech startups or organizations um, that, that are beginning to grow their business, they say, what's that story? We don't have a story. But the fact is this, you every brand has got a story. You find your story in the history. You find your story in your mission. You find the story in the purpose, in the challenges, in the impact that you are creating. You find stories in all of these places. So even as a communication professional, these are some of the places you find stories for your organization. These are the places you find stories for your organization. You need to go back to go forward. You need to look at the history of the organization, the mission, the purpose, the challenges, the impact, the work you're doing. That is where you, you find stories. And of course, when you have stories, it's important to distill your stories into key brand messages because you don't just want to be saying random stories that become boring or become monotonous. You need to be able to distill your stories to key brand messages and say, one, two, three. These are the three brand talking points I want us to be known for. 
these are the talking points or the, the brand message we want this tech startup, this organization to be known for. And of course, like I say, leverage um, annual holidays to tell your stories and incorporate into your PR initiative. So I'd say this earlier, whether you're writing your press release or you're putting together an op-ed or you're, you're putting together a pitch deck or you are interacting with stakeholders, investors, or anybody, you need to incorporate your stories into your PR initiative. It's very important. Now, if you're getting me to this point, please type in the chat box. Let me know. I'm getting you. Um, let me know how much you're getting. Like, if you're getting, if you want me to fire on, just drop in the chat. I want to see activity in the chat so I know that you're getting me to this point. All right, great. I see. I see. Uh, great, great, great. I, I, I love the feedback. I love the feedback. So keep the feedback coming. Uh, great, great, great. Okay, good. So stories are important. Stories are important. Stories over st statistics. So um, if you also have extra fingers, you can type, you just put stories over statistics, just put in a chat section. So as we go on, let's go on to the next slide. Like I said, every brand has got a story. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Having a story is one step, but distilling your story to key brand messages is very important. Effective communications revolve around two or three key messages. Effective communication revolves around two or three key messages. Whether you're going, you are having an interview, a media interview, whether it's a live interview or a, a Q&A interview, or a radio interview, you need to always distill your messaging, your stories into two or three key messages that you want your brand to be known for. If you're a tech startup, for instance, and if you're a tech startup that is, um, empower that is empowering women, then of course, one of the key messages revolve around the achievement of the SDG5, which is um, gender equality. That's going to be a key messaging for your organization. Of course, there's a message, there's a, there's a key messaging around the fact that you are a tech, you are a tech um, startup, and whatsoever your tech solution tries to to solve in the market, there's going to be messaging around it. But every great communication, effective communication, revolves around two or three key messaging. So it's easy, it's clear, it's concise, and it's easy to understand. That's something you need to do. So present. One thing is, like I say. Have your story, distill your stories into key uh, messaging. Then, of course, present examples that align with your story. Create supporting statement. So if you say that you are a tech startup that support women, then you should have case studies and examples of things that you have done or you're currently doing and how your tech solution or how your solution or how your organization is supporting women. Right, so you need to not only have a story and um, you know create points or messaging point. You need to have supporting statement and use proof points for credibility. Like I said earlier, lead with the story. Use data and statistics to build credibility. Lead with the story. Use data and statistics and case studies and testimonials to create credibility. In my definition of public relations earlier, I said public relations are about building awareness, then building social proof, and then building credibility. And all of this has to be aligned with the business objectives. You're doing all of this to achieve business objectives. So let's go on to the next slide. If you get to, if you get me to this point, please type in the chat session. I'm getting it, so I'm sure that you're getting it to this point. Um, so, like I said, have your have your miss have your stories. Stories are important, and great, great, great. I see what Annie wrote there. That's great. Um, have your stories. Stories are important. Distill your stories into key brand messaging, and then use proof points for credibility, and like using statistics, using data, using case studies to um, increase credibility for your story because having the story is not enough. You need, then it needs to be credible. It needs to be something people believe and something aligned with. And according to Annie, your brand story should connect to people's realities. I agree 100% with you, Annie. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. In the next slide, we're gonna be talking about creating actionable public relations campaign. So 
I don't know if you get if you've taken kind of if you're going with me, you're going with me with the, in the flow of what I'm of how I'm leading this session. First, we 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 this the mystified what public relations is. Then we talked about the fact that stories are important and critical. Then, of course, we talked about key messaging. And then we are now talking about the fact that you need to build an actionable public relations campaign. Now, this is something you may want to um, take your pen and write if you if you want to like leave this session and you know begin to plan your own small public relations campaign. So let's move on to the next slide. The next slide, we're going to be looking at building an actionable public relations campaign. Now, this is a simple seven-step PR plan. Of course, it's it's more complex than this, but I try to break it down to very simple seven steps that can be applied by anyone. The first thing I always say when you want to start up your PR plan is clarify your business goals, your business objective, your business goals. That's very important. And of course, define your communication and your media goals. Target audience, clarify your messaging, identify publication to page, develop timeline, execute and measure. But I want to spend some time and look at the first two points, clarify your business goal and your public relations goals. So the thing is this, most people when developing a PR campaign only think of, when, when they're putting together a PR campaign, they only think, oh, we want awareness on CNN. We want, we want to be published on this media. We want to be seen, want to be known. They are led away from the business goals and focus more on PR and media goals. And like I said earlier, Everything you do in public relations and communication needs to tie back to business objectives. It has to tie back to business objectives. So it's not, it's not about, it's not about, it's not about creating awareness. It's not about being heard or being seen or being positioned. It's not about that alone. It's a means to an end. The end is achieving your business objectives. Um, can you go back to the uh, previous slide, please? The, the seven step, because someone is asking for it. But like I say, your business, when you want to develop your PR plan, the first thing you need to do is clarify what your business objectives are. Do you, are you seeking funding? Do you want to attract new partnerships? Do you want to increase your, your customer database? Do you want to um, build new partnerships with um, some some other business within your industry. What exactly are your business objectives? Are you launching a new product? Are you growing your user and customer base? Are you expanding to a new market? What exactly are your business objectives? Are you attracting new talent? So it's important you distill what business objectives are that are aligned, usually aligned with marketing, sales, and of course. The objective of profitability because every business wants to make money i'm not saying i'm not saying that you should always think of your pr initiative in terms of numbers and in terms of profitability but you need to think as the business owner would think the business owner doesn't really care doesn't care only about just being um being on cnn or being uh on the front page of newspaper or their story being being on major tech publications what they really care about is how would this feed into the business objective? So you, this is the first step. Ask yourself clearly what business objectives or what business goals are you pursuing or are you, do you intend to achieve when planning your PR initiative? Then once that is clarified, the next thing will be to define what your PR and your media objectives or your media goals are. And that takes us to the next slide, which is these objectives or these goals are created to support business objectives so they determine your pr strategy the narrative and of course the type of publication you reach out to your pr goals and the media goals determine your pr strategy and the type of publication you're going to reach out to so this is where you look at brand awareness or you look at thought leadership positioning you want to generate end media you want top of the mind in your sector you want to be positioned as a leading uh, provider of certain solutions or certain tech solutions. These are, are your PR and business object, and your PR, your PR and media objectives or your PR and media goals. Like I say, defining, determining your PR and media goals only come after you have a clear understanding of what your business 
objectives or what the business objective for the client or for the organization you're working for are all about. And if you're a tech startup, you need to understand what you, you need to be clear about what your business objectives are before you even begin to think of initiating a public relations campaign. And then it moves, we move on to the next slide. Like I say, these are the two points I really wanted to spend a lot of time because this is where most people miss out that when they want to launch a PR campaign, they only think about awareness, what media, is it going to be international, is it going to be pan-African, is it going to be global, is it going to be tech? That's what they think about. They don't think about the business goals. Now, in mapping your long-term PR strategy, which is something that I recommend for organizations, for tech startup, whether you're starting, whether you're medium, whether you're growing, you need to have a long-term PR strategy. And how do you map this out? You start by highlighting what your, your new circle is and what your corporate milestones are in the year. Usually when we start out with a client, we look at what the, the, the new circle within the industry is. By new, we're looking at what corporate milestones, what are the things they want to do? Are they launching new products? Are they expanding into new markets? And of course, they are so, they're certain industry um, activities, events, and um, initiatives that you can also, you know, leverage to launch or to, you know, execute your public relations um, strategy. So I usually recommend that you have at least a quarterly PR calendar. The best is to have a, a yearly PR calendar, even though some of this is not you know, engraved in stone because sometimes you might need to adjust it here and there, but it's important that you have a PR calendar ahead of time. So you map out what your corporate milestones and what upcoming use you have within your organization and put it down there in your calendar and then begin to develop PR initiatives or activities that you intend to use to corporate news um, cycle, like we're talking about press release or um, social media campaign, product reviews, all of those things. Once you have your calendar in place, you can now say, for this, we're going to do, we're going to do an op-ed, we're going to do a press release, for this, we're going to do a social media campaign. So you have all of that well planned out. I need to say that public relations is proactive. It's a proactive initiative. It's not something you react to. It's not something that it just happened now, and you're thinking, what PR thing do I need to do? You need to be proactive and plan ahead of time and ask yourself, what is it I need to do in March? A International Women's Day, what is it I'm, I need to do? It's going to be Africa Day, what, 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 what is it I'm going to do? Um, all of those milestones, whether it's your corporate milestones or industry milestones, you need to plan ahead of time what PR initiatives you're going to execute. And of course, determine what medium you're going to use to reach out you know, to achieve your business as well as your PR and communication objectives. Then, of course, I mentioned this earlier, consider tying your PR activities into annual events or forecasted trends within your sector so that you stay relevant and people get to know. I mean, so you, you latch on trends or things that are happening within your sector to amplify your story, to tell your story, to position your organization. If you're getting me to this point, please type in the chat, uh, in the chat section, getting it. And if you have any questions so far, please drop also in the chat section um, so, uh, so that I can start looking at the question. But let me know you're getting it in the chat um, box. I want to see, I want to be sure that you're following me to this point. Um, I love my audience. Uh, thank you for being very engaging. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, having talked about mapping your long-term public relations strategy, I'd like us to now pay some attention to media relations fundamentals. Media relations fundamentals. So in this place, we're going to be looking at some of the basic things you can do as it has to do with media relations. And the first thing I need to point out when it comes to building an effective media relations strategy is that you need to think like a journalist to get a journalist's attention. Okay, someone, okay, good. So I'm going to slow down a bit. Thank you for the feedback, Christine. I'm going to slow down a bit. I'm also very mindful of time. So when building your media relations strategy, one of the things you need to do is, this is the basics. You need to think like a journalist to earn a journalist's attention. You need to think like a journalist to earn a journalist's attention. The question is, what is important to a journalist? What is news 
to a journalist. What you need to understand all of those elements for you to get the attention of a journalist. Because most people think because you have something coming up in your organization or you have an upcoming news within your organization, the journalist is going to be interested. They may not be interested in it if it doesn't appeal to their journalistic sense and if it doesn't sound like news. So you need to understand how to take what is happening within your organization, which may seem boring or which may not look like news, and turn it in a way that becomes news. So for instance, if you have, um, if you, if you, your, your organization is um, supporting women, I'm using this example, last month was International Women's Day, uh, which is, which was also the month of my birthday. So I'm going to be using women, um, the International month, International Women's Month, for example. So if your product, for instance, supporting women, um, you've probably, you probably, you know, issued press releases, you've talked about the product a couple of times. It may then become monotonous, but leveraging the International Women's Month present to you an opportunity to highlight and showcase further what your organization is doing, maybe in terms of case studies, right? So maybe the last time you went you went out to the media, it was a press release announcing one of your products. But it would be great to go back to the media pitching a story talking about how technology, for instance, which is using an example that your organization is a tech uh, your, your product, a tech product, how technology is solving a, a problem, a major problem for women. And when you pitch this story, you then show case studies from your organization, how your technology or your organization is using technology to address a pressing issue facing women. That then becomes something that the journalists might, it's kind of interesting to them. Because if you just say, hey, we are XYZ and we produce, we have this technology, it may no longer become news. So you need to be able to think how the journalist will think to get a journalist attention. And one, one, examples I, one example I usually give is that when a dog bites a man, that is not news to a journalist. But when a man bites a dog, then that becomes news. I don't know if that makes sense to you. It's a it's a funny analogy just for to, to make it make um you know make a point. Of course, <laughs> if a man bites a dog, then the person should be taken to a psychiatric um, hospital. But if a dog bites a man, it's not news. But when a man bites a dog, that becomes news. That's what a journalist can write about that. When a dog bites a man, when a man bites a dog, but a journalist will not write about when a dog bites a man. So like I said, that is just to give a funny analogy, but I hope you get the point I'm making. The point is, it has to be something that's newsworthy. It has to be something that's relevant. It has to be something that people are interested in for the journalist to write. And you need to be able to make your organization, your, your startup, your story to be interesting in a way that the journalist will want to write about you. Then of course, you need to also understand the power of niche publications. One of the mistakes some organizations, some startups do is the fact that when they want to get media, they think about at the top publication. I want to be at the tech crunch. I want to be in the top um, international, um, publications. It's important. It's good. It's great to have all of that. But the thing is, this, you need to start. You need to start from your niche, right? If you're a tech publication, you should first and foremost conquer tech platforms, tech publications. If you're a sorry, if you're a tech organization, you're a tech company. Your story should first and foremost be published within the tech sector before you move on to start wanting to be on African Voice, CNN African Voice, or the CNBC Africa and all of that. So the power of niche publication is very important because it validates and lends credibility. You can't say you're a tech um, 
startup without being published by tech publication. Because if you've not been published by tech publication, then you are not necessarily being seen in the industry as a tech um, startup. So you need to leverage and understand the power of um, niche publication. Of course, building relationships with journalists is also a very critical part of media relations. And how do you build relationship with journalists? Go on Twitter. I mean, I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Idago David. Um, I don't have a lot of followers, but Twitter is a very, very important place where you can build relationships with journalists. If you're on Twitter, uh, drop your Twitter handle in the chat. Let me know you're on Twitter. So um, let me, how many of you are on Twitter? So whether you are a PR consultant, you're, you're working in-house or you're a startup and you want to build, um, you want to build um, relationship with the media, leverage Twitter. Le Twitter is very important, especially as it has to do with building relationship with the media. How do you do this? Set out the first and foremost, go online, Google stories that are within your industry. Look at look at the, the reporter that you know wrote about you. Then go on Twitter and look for them. Look for these this, um, reporters and follow them and tweet retweet their tweets, you know, like their tweets. Sometimes make a comment that start building relationship with this guy. It's not something that happens one day, it's not something that happens one month, but it's something that you do over. And these, these are some of the few points you can use building an effective media relations strategy for your organization. If you're getting me to this point, we're almost getting to the uh, closing part of this. And so keep start getting your questions ready or keep your questions coming already. In the chat, let me know you're getting me. So just drop, get it, get it, get it in the chat. So I know that you are still there and you can hear me clearly and you're getting me to this point. Christine, I see your Twitter handle. I'm going to follow you after this session. And by the way, let me um, put my only Twitter handle here so you can start following. That's my Twitter handle. I will also share the Twitter handle of um, a company so you can follow. So let's move on to the next slide. And in the next slide, which is the last, um, conversation here is personal brand elevation, the power of attention, personal elevation, the power of attention. I cannot, you know, I cannot overemphasize the importance of personal brand when building a business, whether you're building your, your career as a professional or you're building a business, personal brand is, is very important. As a CEO, as a, as a C-suite executive, personal brand is very important. And um, in the next slide, I talk about the, the power of attention the, and some facts about attention. One of the facts, one fact number one about attention is the fact obscurity is your greatest enemy as a business ahead of not having money. In fact, let me go stretch it one step for that. As a, a professional, obscurity is your greatest enemy. As a service provider, it's, it's greater than not having money. And the next fact about uh, attention is that money, industry rec recognition, investment opportunities, media coverage, and all of that follows attention. Attention. So it's important that you pay attention to getting attention. <laughs> you pay attention to getting attention. Now, I used to use uh, a very funny uh, analogy still to, get, to explain it. I say, for instance, if you're a medical doctor and they bring two patients into the hospital who had accidents, so they say just had an accident and two of these patients are in the hospital, one of them is shouting, Doctor, let me let me let me backtrack a bit. One of them just had a, a slight bruise on the hand, right? But that person is shouting, doctor, 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 and shouting at the top of the person's lungs. And the other person who has a major injury, maybe an internal bleeding or a major injury, is just saying, Doctor, doctor. I'm not feeling well. I think I have some pains. And the person is like trying to speak, you know, I think I have some pains. I'm feeling some slight pains here. 
if you are the doctor, who are you going to attend to? Person number one or person number two? Person number one, the person who has a slight injury but shouting, doctor, who are you likely more disposed to want to attend to if you do not know their situation? Put in the chat section. Person number one who sh who's shouting the most or person number two who's just saying nicely, I think I have. <laughs> of course, the screaming guy. That is it. So in the world of business and in life, attention is very important. People buy and do business with people they know, like, and the trust. But you see, people cannot know, people cannot trust you if they don't like you. People cannot like you if they don't know you. People cannot trust your organization, your startup, your business, if they don't like you. People cannot like your startup, your business, you as a professional, if they don't know you. So these three goes hand in hand. It's important that you seek attention as a startup, as an organization, as a professional, by building what I like to call the KLT factor. The KLT factor, that takes us to the next slide, which is the know, the like, and the trust. The know, the like, and the trust. That is what you want to build for your organization. Taking us to the next slide. The next slide, please. Um, the, yeah, good. The KLT factor. So the KLT factor is really about seeking to be known, seeking to be liked, and seeking to be trusted. How do you, how do, how are you known? This brings us to everything we've been talking about earlier. This, before you even set out to want to be known, before you even set out to want to seek attention, you need to first and foremost distill your story, distill your core story and ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? It's very important. This, that stage is very important. Of course, identify what positioning you want to highlight in your story. We are a tech startup supporting women. We are a tech startup, you know, um, simplifying um, payment in, uh, across Africa. You need to identify what position you want to be known for. And then identify target audience and media that you will reach out and you'll be speaking to. Then finally, share your message. Share your message, telling your story to feed the media being used. People will not know you if you don't share your message. People will not hear about you or like you if you do not share your message. So um, especially for startups, whether you're a tech startup or you are, um, you know, you be, you're just building your personal brand, it's important you share your message. It's important you get the word out there. Like I said, be known is one step. Be and how do you seek to be like? Be relatable, be true, be authentic. Be relatable. This is where storytelling comes in. This is where storytelling comes in. You have to speak in the language that people understand. You have to speak in the realities of people. You have to use cultural um, you know, examples that people can relate with when telling your stories, right? So that is one of the ways to um, build likability as a brand. And of course, seek to be trusted, be authentic, be authentic. I cannot overemphasize this enough. You cannot fake it. You can only fake it to some extent, but you can't fake it for so long. So you have to be authentic. That is why you have to go back when distilling your story, go back to your mission, to your purpose, to your vision, to your history, to bring out the true story, your real story that is unique to you. No two brands have the same story. Just like no two individuals have the same story. So it's important that you pay attention to authenticity. You have to be authentic for people to like you and for people to relate with you. Then, of course, validate your stories proof points with case studies, with data, with testimonials. Validate your um, stories. If you look at everything we talk about as it has to do with the KLT factor, it rallies back to what I said earlier, which is building awareness, building social proof, and then building credibility because the only can like can do business with can engage with you can give you opportunities can provide you um, you know platforms is when they know the like and they trust you 
This applies to businesses as well as it applies to CEOs and professionals, the personal brands of uh, professionals. So if you get the KLT factor, please drop it in the chat section. Just write KLT so I know you get the point to this point. I'm using a lot of rhymes. Um, okay, great. I see um, Christine has gotten the point to this point. Um, now, let's move to the last slide, which is the key takeaways, the key takeaways from this session. How do you start out? You, you might be asking, yeah, okay, David, great session. I've heard everything you said. Great. How do I start? One of the first things I would like you to do is carry out the PR and the brand audit. Carry out a PR audit to know where you currently are, the assets that you have, what your stories are. Is it clear enough? Do people understand it? Are you already speaking to your audience? Do all of those audits. Do a PR audit. Do a media audit. Do a brand audit. Is your positioning... Um, you know, communicating the messaging that you want to be known for, all of those things you have to do. Then, of course, once that is done and you know where you currently stand, go ahead to create key messaging and talking points for your corporate as well as your personal brand. That's important. And then share your stories. Share stories, not statistics. Use statistics to validate your story, but always lead with your story. Then, of course, Build a media list in your industry. That's important. And that has to do with media relations. Connect with reporters through social media and offer value. I've talked about this earlier. Seek opportunities to showcase your brand. Like I said, you have to be seen. You have to be heard. You have to be known. So it's important that you seek opportunities as a brand. Speaking opportunities, platforms to showcase, enter awards, and all of that. Then... The last point is repeat the process. Repeat the process. And um, I'm sure if you do this over and over again, you will be getting yourself in the right, um, on the right track, in the right direction. So there's one thing I like to say when it has to do with uh, uh, personal branding. And I used to say this. I said, it is a thing of not only, if it's, okay, seeking to be known, to be seen, to be heard, it's not a, only a business obligation. It's actually um, a mission. If you're offering a service, a product, or anything in the market of value that you think people need in the marketplace, and you are not, you are not known, you are not heard, you are not seen, you are doing a disservice to not only yourself, but you're doing a disservice to the marketplace. Being that you then allow people who do not have as, as much quality, as much value as what your product has or what you have to bring to the marketplace, you allow those people to thrive because those are the people that are seen, those are the people that are heard, those are the people that are known. And like I said earlier, attention and opportunity, uh, opportunities and recognition follows attention. So, Seeking attention shouldn't be something you, you, see, you just do because it's business. Do it because you are on a mission. You are on a mission to change lives. You are on a mission to add value to the marketplace. See it as a mission, as against seeing it as another business activity. Because the truth is, if the marketplace needs your service or needs you, then you'll be doing them a great disservice by not bringing it to the marketplace, by not communicating your story clearly, by not um, you know, putting it out there so that people can see, people can, um, can build likability, and people can trust you and want to do business with you. Once again, thank you for being uh, a great audience and staying engaged till the end of it. And that gets me to the last part. If you got questions, let, now drop it in the comment section. If you got now, um, Christine asked, is that a uh, place for I can use to create brand audit? Definitely, there are templates. And even if you go online, if you go online and search for brand audits, um, you, you will see some templates actually online. You can then customize those templates to suit your own uh, you know, business or your own personal brand. So, yes, there are templates you can get online to, um, to do some brand audit. So, 
let your questions come and let me know in the i want to i want to get your feedback i want to get your feedback in the chat session how was this session for you let me know how the session has been for you uh how would you rate it um out of 10 i like to get my own feedback on my own session before the the the, the facilitators decide to rate me i want to get my feedback here so how would you rate this session was it valuable was it insightful did you get learn um some things that you can take away from me so just drop your in a chat session let me know how the session has been and uh, while you're doing that you can also follow you can also follow us on uh, on twitter and on um tweet and on instagram you can follow seymour media or at seymour media on instagram as well as on twitter and of course, you can follow our MD, Claudine Moore, on Instagram as well as on Twitter at Claudine Moore. And then you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Idago David, as showing on the screen, as showing on your screen. Uh, great. I see, I see a great thing coming in. Thank you so much, Christine, for your feedback. Thank you, Sheung, for your feedback. Um, 8 over 10. Thank you. Um, I'll do better to get it to uh, 10 over 10. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Uh, Boniface, is it advisable to do your own PR or have someone uh, blow your trumpet so, um, to speak? So the thing is this, when, um, no, so the thing is this, as a startup, you have to believe in your product so much that you are willing to, to blow your own trumpet. That's number one. Okay, but this, the thing is, you can only do it as as much as you know. There's a level, there's a level you want to get to that you need professionals to do it. But before you even get to asking professionals to do your PR for you, you need to understand what your story is. So you, you, nobody should be able to sell your story to, nobody should be more passionate about your story than you. So it's important, I, I usually, we re usually recommend that you be your number one uh, PR person. Then of course, there's a level of PR, there's some level of PR that you then need a professional to do it for you. Then you can reach out to professional, but on, from the basics, you need, to st you need to start out being your own PR person, all right? If you don't, you know, to your own heart, no other person should be able to do it more than you. Well, sometimes PR professionals know how to do it more than you, but I recommend that you also know how to toot your own heart yourself. Thank you, Annie, for your feedback. Um, I appreciate your feedback so much, and thank you for being very engaged. I love my audience. Even though I didn't get to see you guys physically, I enjoyed every single bit of this session. And I look forward to connecting with you guys um, across all social media platforms. So please follow me on my um, personal um, Instagram and my Twitter handle, as well as Timo Media and Claude Moore. And I'm going to follow you back. And let's keep this conversation going. If you have any questions, even after this session, feel free to drop it there um, on, on across social media. And um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this session.